Hi, I'm Jenna, and also known as Rachel Lemon, <laughs> and this is episode 99. I cannot believe next week will be 100. That just totally blows my mind. It's crazy. And today is January 1st, 2014, which also seems crazy to me because 2013 went so fast for me. So fast. <sighs> but new year, exciting new things, hopefully, and... Last year was just amazing. And in a way, when I think back to it, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if this year can top it, but we're going to try, right? So, okay, quick. Knit-alongs. We are still have our Francis, the sock wearing fox knit-along. And she is so squishy and soft. And this one, um, this sample is made out of Dancing Dog Dye Works, Twist and Shout. And the red is foxy red, black and natural, and some lime green socks. So you still have a whole month. You have until the end of January to get your fox knitted. And I love seeing all of the finished foxes. So awesome. I don't know, there's like eight of them now, I think. Seven, eight. So keep them coming. You can do it, little foxes. <laughs> um, also, the other knit along that starts, well, you could start it last night. I was totally cool with you starting it New Year's Eve. But it kind of officially starts today. I got to actually get the thread up for it. Um, is the Sprig sweater um, by Alana Dacos of Never Not Knitting. Her username is Never Not Knitting. So I have it all printed out, ready to go. I have not started mine. I need to swatch. Um, I was actually sick all over the weekend. Today is like the first day I'm starting to feel a bit normal. And it's all like, like a head cold. Like I was all stuffed up and, you know, it just wasn't pretty. And then this is the yarn I'm using. I have frogged my Lucy sweater. Um, I made it not quite a year and a half ago. Maybe like a year and two or three months ago. And it was kind of big when I made it then. But I was like, mm, well, whatever. Right? Kind of just like I go with it. Um, now it's huge on me. I have no use for it whatsoever. It barely even like stays on my shoulders. So I frogged it and this is Cascade 220, regular 220. And it is, a, the name was called Turtle and it has a number because it seems like websites like Jimmy Beans Wool and Webs, um, they put the number and the name and I can remember names but not a four digit number. Um, so it was called Turtle. So it is a heathered green it's like a light green and a dark green and it actually if I would have printed this out in color it looks exactly like the color she used for the, the sample sweater. Now she used um, Quince and Company and it's an alpaca blend. I'm not a fan of alpaca yarns. I just don't really care for them. They're super soft but not really for me. So when I saw the pattern I was like hey I can totally harvest some for us from the sweater and I had more than enough for the Lucy cardigan that I had knit um, and it's like a dead ringer so I just I'm gonna swatch because that's what good knitters do <laughs> so I'm gonna swatch and I'm gonna get that cast on hopefully today so I'm excited about that I can't wait to wear it because I think that is super cute as soon as I saw the pattern I fell in love with it and it was a total insta buy like I was like click check out hands down my dog is barking. Somebody better let her in. I hope you can't hear that. Um, let's see. I have no finished objects this week. Um, I, I was an epic fail with my advent scarf. So moving on to FOs. <laughs> I'm actually in the middle of a row. Um, it's the spacer row where you put the beads and I was working on it yesterday. I worked on it all day yesterday trying to get it done and I just felt like crap and after a while I just put it away because I couldn't concentrate on it. It was a very uneventful New Year's Eve in my house. The kids got to stay up late. We watched the ball drop. We went to bed. So middle of the bead row but I have gotten through day 23. I have one more day to go. So it will get done. I was thinking, well, I could just bind off after day 23. I could just do it. Nobody will ever know but me. But I'll know and it'll bug the crap out of me. I don't know why. 
I would just feel like an epic failure fully if I didn't complete it. But at the same time, I'm almost like, oh, I just want to be done with it. I want to block it and wear it. Because it is huge. It is absolutely ginormously long. As they always are. I mean, you don't go into this thinking, oh, I'm just going to have this dainty little, little thing. See? It's long. <laughs> Ridiculously long. So, um, the pattern is the Advent Calendar Scarf 2013 by Kristen Beckinson. And the yarn is Highland Handmaids Pin Cherry Lace, which I love, love, love the Pin Cherry Lace. Um, she does have other bases. And um, this was a custom order, and it is a aqua, a light aqua, and it ended up being called Just Right for Jenna. See, I like even saved the thing. I'm like, yay, it has my name on it. Yay! So it is 80% um, fine merino and 20% Tessa silk, and you get 1,100 yards in this bad boy. So one skein will do it. Um, I am getting really low. It will be just enough to finish it. And that's another thing. I'm like, I only have one day to go. Look at this little, I cannot leave this little bit of yarn behind. Like, I have to finish it and use up as much of it as I can. Because what do you do with scraps of lace? I mean, really, when you think about it, what am I supposed to do? It's not like I can, like, make a hexapuff out of it because it's lace weight, not fingering weight. Not that I've made a hexapuff anytime soon. I've seen tons of people making hexapuffs on Instagram, and I'm like, I need to get back to those in a big way. Because I really love the hexapuff blanket, and I really do want one. Um, and then the only other <laughs> work in progress I have, I started something new. Because I couldn't help myself. I needed something new. Itching to do something new. And at first I was like, okay, i got to finish my advent calendar scarf first. But you know, I just kind of have lost steam on it. So I started a new project. I know, right? I shouldn't have. And it's not, it's not just a little project. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen it in progress. It's a sweater. <laughs> um, so I went and cast it on the driftwood. Let me see. I have the pattern in here. It is a free pattern. And let me see. Doo, doo, doo. Lucy's right behind the camera. Let's hope she doesn't bump it. I didn't realize she was in here. Um, it's called Driftwood and it is by Isabel Kramer. I print all my stuff out in black and white. But this one was really cute. It was like light gray and navy, I think. So that's what it looks like. So I am almost done with the body. It is a super, super fast pattern. Um, I've really, really enjoyed it. I mean, this is like one of those ones that I'm like, hmm, I might actually not mind knitting this again. So let's see, hold it up. So I think I only have like another like two inches to go. And then on the body to be done. And then you go back and you actually put a button band here. So it's curling in really bad right now. And it's, oh, these, it's so funny. I look at this sweater and I'm like, oh my God, I love it, but it's so not me. I just, I don't know. Here, I'll show you the back so you can really see the stripes uninterrupted. Like with the front. So it's, I'm using Cascade 220 in the silver gray and the color is 8401. You see it's just a heathered gray. Silver gray describes it perfectly. And then I am also using Noro um, the Curon in color 40. So good old Noro. So lots of blues, aquas, and purple. And honestly, there was more purple than I was expecting. I guess when it's all rolled up, it really looked more blues and greens. And there's some little pops of green, not as much green as I expected, and a lot more purple. But I can't wait to try it on. I haven't been trying on as I go. 
Um, but I think it's going to be roomy. It's going to be a little big. Um, I kind of fell between sizes. So the sweater is supposed to be worn with one to two inches of positive ease. So with my measurements, I was going to end up with three to four inches of positive ease, or I was going to be no ease. And let's face it, with stripes, if you, unless if you're fit, unless if your body's pretty smooth and you don't have too many lumps and bumps and squishy spots, stripes can really make you bit, look bigger. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to go with the bigger size. I'd rather the sweater be looser and roomier so it wasn't unflattering on me for being too tight. So, love it. Love, love, love it. I've really, really enjoyed knitting on it. But it's probably going to go on the back burner once I cast on the sprig. So that's why I was really trying to get as much done as I could. Um, that's it for, um, works in progress. So I have some yarny goodness and, um, I'm trying to think of what order to do this. I have a magazine review. Um, I guess I'll start with this first. Normally I show like tools of the trade kind of stuff, but it came with yarn, but I'll show this first. So I got this as a gift from my wonderful friend, Michelle, Wooly Love, and it is a Kiki Boo bag. So Kiki Boo bags are made by Denise of the Knitting Den, and this is such a great size. Because I got another fox bag for Christmas, and this one's bigger. It's such a great, I think it'll be a great sweater bag. And I love that the interior fabric, it's the glasses that match the foxes. Because I have to admit, I like it when the inside fabric totally matches the outside fabric. It doesn't have to. It won't keep me from buying a bag. But I can definitely appreciate it. So it's really sturdy. It has a nice handle. has a cute little zipper pull. I love the foxes. I love the orange and the gray. Super cute. And I actually think my sprig sweater is going to live in the fox bag. So I might as well just put that in there while I'm thinking about it. Super cute. Like I said, the pattern fits right in there. No problem. I can zip it up. Love, love, love it. And then with the bag came a skein of yarn. So it is Dancing Dog Dye Works in the Waltz Worst, which is probably my most favoriteest base in the whole wide world. Um, in the Grinchy colorway, which is really cute because it's all the colors from uh, the Grinchy Soul Christmas, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which is one of my favorite children's books. It's one of my favorite. Um, Christmas specials and I just love it. It's super super colorful. Yay! I gotta make something fabulous with it. I'm like, it needs to be hat or something. Oh and then I went, I went and I had, they have a knit night at the little yarn shop that I went to last week. Um, but it's on Fridays, and Friday's like family night or date night with my husband and I, depending on if we get a sitter or whatever, but it's Friday nights, you know, I, I, I don't like to make plans or have a set something to do, so I was kind of bummed when they said like a knit night. Well, then someone else said, oh, well, there's a small group of us that get together on Saturday afternoons, and we get lunch from the local diner and knit, and, and so I went and did that Saturday, and it was awesome! I was so excited to have like a new place to go and knit and buy yarn. I mean, just to have something pretty close is really great. And it's just a little gem of a place. And um, um, so I went and I, I couldn't help myself. I made a purchase because you're so you're surrounded by all this yarn, and I'm sure like some of the like novelty of it will wear off after a while. I hope. If not, I'm gonna be seriously broke. Um, but it was really fun and everybody was really nice and um, so if you're, I'm trying to think, um, it's Northeast Ohio area, it's kind of a little place out of the way. So um, people from like the Medina and like Worcester area and stuff would be pretty close but it's in a tiny little town called Lodi and it is called Black Locust Farms and they're 
they're not open often. They're open like Wednesday evening. They're open Friday and Saturday. So they're not open a ton, but they have a great selection. Um, lots of Cascade, some El Rey, Opal, lots of um, Noro. Um, now I call it Mochi Mochi and they call it Moki Moki. So take your pick of how you pronounce it. Um, just a really good variety of really good yarns. Um, stuff I've never heard of. Some stuff that is fabulous and I can't wait to try. Um, the only thing they don't have that I wish they did was Madeline Tosh. Because I am desperately on a hunt. I need two skeins of Madeline Tosh Sport in the window pane colorway and I cannot find it anywhere. I don't know if there's anywhere I can order it. So I was kind of hoping... Um, I could find a local yarn shop because there used to be one in Worcester, which is a bit of a drive, that had it and they closed. So, anyway, so I was in there and I, <laughs> I was not expecting to buy this. Not at all. So, I bought a sweater quantity of Ella Ray, um, which is really cute because I was talking last week about how I had never really heard of it or used it and then um, I posted a picture of my purchase on Instagram and Corey Iraq Knits was like oh I was gonna tell you you have to buy some LRA so um, I bought four skeins of LRA it is classic superwash and it is a Heather um, from what I was told it is very comparable to Cascade 220 superwash that's good love Cascade 220 superwash and I was like okay I'm trying to expand my yarn horizons because if there's something good out there that I'm not trying, I want to know about it. Right? Like, I don't want to be left in the dark about something good. So, this color kind of caught my eye. I was kind of like, immediately I want orange. There was this gorgeous burnt orange Ella Ray Heather. The same stuff, just like I said, orange. And it was a gorgeous shade. Like, gorgeous. But I'm like, I've been buying a lot of orange lately. I just bought a sweater quantity of like a ginger orange color last week. So the battery on my camera died. I let my husband use it to record Christmas morning with the kids opening presents and all that. And he didn't charge it. So my battery died as I was telling you about buying a sweater's worth of El Rey. In editing I'll have to see because it's been hmm, probably close to an hour now. I had to let it charge up. So this is what I got. And I talked about how it was comparable to Cascade 220 Superwash. So, um, it is a Heather. And I bought it to make the Miranda sweater. So the Miranda sweater is, there's a short sleeve and a long sleeve version. And it has a hood, no hood. But it has cables that go down the front. And they kind of like fan out towards the bottom. And there's like a pocket. So, um, I'd seen the one Megan of Stockin' at Zombies made. Hers was super cute. And then... My friend Amanda, Sparky Spud, um, posted pictures of hers, and hers was super cute on her, too. So I was so inspired, and walking around the knit shop, I was drawn to orange, and then kind of went to green, and then I'm like, well, I've done a lot of gray lately, too. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try something new. And it is a Heather, so it's very kind of sapphire-y blue with teal in it. So, because I was drawn to teal, too, but I've just made two teal sweaters. Um, my Bonnie and my Snowflake. So, let's see. Absolutely lovely. Like I said, it's not a flat blue. It's lots of dimension to it because there are flecks of teal in it. Um, it's so funny because I would have never thought this would have been a color I would have picked. But I'm super excited to get to it. I don't know when I'm going to get to the Miranda sweater. But I thought it only takes um, four skeins of um, Superwash yarn. And let's see, there's... Okay, unlike Cascade 220 that has 220 yards, this one has 219. <laughs> um, so, but I'm excited. I think it's soft, it's squishy. I'm excited to try it. So that'll be on the needles at some point. I can't say I have like immediate plans, but I'd like it for the, for spring. Because lots of people wear it. Um, I'm going to make the cap sleeve, like short sleeve version. And lots of people wear like a fitted long sleeve t-shirt under it. And I think it looks really cute. So I think it would be great for spring. And then the other thing I bought that I'm now kind of like, mm, I bought this. 
It is a cone of yarn. Um, it's a very terracotta color. And this will go into the magazine review that I have. Um, but it is Brown Sheep Company. It is their Nature Spun Sport. And it is 100% wool. And I really think, I guess I should have looked on Ravelry at reviews. Because people says it pills really bad. I don't want something that's going to pill really bad for what I'm going to make with it. Um, I love the color. And I'm... It's a bit on the thin side for a sport, so I think with it pilling, and I might have a gauge issue, it'll be definitely a little not as dense of a fabric for what I want to make, and I'm afraid that might make it pill even more. It is not a superwash. It is a workhorse wool, um, so I'm really nervous about it. I guess I should have done my research a little more. Um, I'm... It's like I, I don't want to like return it, return it. I would like to exchange it for something else. I don't know if that's a possibility. I don't know what the return policy is for the knit shop. Um, I will have to ask. But and then I kind of feel like a jerk. But I'm like I'm willing to keep my money in the shop. But I just I kind of got swept up by the color. It's a beautiful, beautiful. It's like terracotta orange, like very true terracotta orange. So, the reason I bought this, and oh, I should tell you, it's a pound. It's a, They also sell it in smaller skeins, like 50 gram skeins. But this is a pound, and you get, it's like, it doesn't say in here, but I looked it up on Ravelry, and in their cones, you get like 1,668 yards. So, over 1,600 yards, um, which is what I needed. So, that brings me into a magazine review. Um, I have a couple inner, or, inter cooperative press books to review but I really want to don't want to do a review of a book in the magazine at the same time um, and I'm doing the magazine today instead of the book because the magazine goes with this, this is the reason I bought this so um, I was at the coffee shop and there's like a newsstand and I picked up the interweave knits it is winter 2014 because I love the sweater on the cover I'm like, oh, interweave, you nailed it. So it is a waffle stitch, um, Henley pullover, um, and it is terracotta orange. Um, the, I have a single skein, a variegated skein, of the yarn that they used for this sweater. It is thicker, in my opinion, considerably thicker than this. I guess I should have maybe dug out that skinny yarn um, and t taken it with me. I actually had forgotten I owned any of it. But anyways, um, I love this sweater. I want my sweater to look just like this one. I want it terracotta orange. I love it so much. I bought the magazine. Like, I would have bought it just for um, this pattern. But I have to say, Interweave Knits, you impressed me with this issue. Interweave Knits had kind of been going for me um but this like I will be watching for the next issues not willing to subscribe but I'll be watching for the next issues so um other patterns that I really love they really really went with the waffle stitch in this pattern a good deal of the um sweaters are waffle stitch um they also have like a new layout I don't know how I like it I think I like the patterns I don't know. They did do bigger pictures. So I liked this one. Let's see. This is the Nanavolt sweater by Carolyn Noyce. N-O-Y-E-S. Um, and I love that they use like Cascade for this. Good old just Cascade 220. So as you can see, it is a waffle stitch. It is a worsted weight. Um, it has brown around the collar and the cuffs and it has like elbow patches. The elbow patches have a cable detailing on them. So I thought that was definitely, and it also is the same detailing. There are little cable details or mock cable details possibly around the cuffs and the collar. So I thought that was really cute. I also really love this. It is a chevron pattern that is, they call it feather nest. It is a feather nest raglan. Um, so it's a raised herringbone pattern. I don't know that I necessarily like it in the silvery gray, but I really like the pattern as a whole. I really like it. I would knit this for sure. 
it's kind of like already in the back of my mind. And this sweater, I love it. I love it so much. It is the Winnipeg Pullover. I can't even begin to pronounce the last name of the lady, but her first name is Agnes. <laughs> I'm very bad with um, names that aren't like Jane is Smith and Jones. And it, it's, it's a flaw of mine, and I apologize. Um, but anyways, it is another waffle stitch pullover. I kind of would have liked it if it would have been like v-neck, but still totally love it. I love that she's wearing a flannel under it since I'm so into my flannels right now and I own a handful of them. And now the sleeves are a little short. They made the sleeves on this a little short because they have the shirt sticking out, but it gives you modifications in the pattern to make them longer. It tells you like, make, you know, knit it so much longer, which I so appreciate. Um, something in the magazine that I didn't really care for. Um, at first glance, I look at it, I'm like, ooh, and then I look up close and I'm like, ooh. It is a, a cardigan. Or no, I guess it's not a cardigan. I'm sorry. It, the button band just goes really low. I would just make it into a cardigan myself. Anyways, it's drop stitches. It's a cable, and in between the cable are drop stitches. I wouldn't like that. I don't like drop stitches. I don't like doing them. don't really care for the look of them myself. Um, so that one was kind of a miss for me. And then, of course, this sweater that I love. I mean, the pictures in this issue are just gorgeous. So that is so on my radar of things I want to make. And then they have a whole article on Waffle Stitch and Beyond that is really cool. I can't say, I, to my knowledge, I cannot think of any major waffle stitch that I have ever done. So it really, it, it talks about gauge, um, you know, increasing and decreasing with them. It really has some really good tips and techniques for the waffle stitch. Okay, then it gets into, um, it says, um, below the mesa, find rustic luxury in six designs that bring together colors of the West, hardy yarns, and unique shapes. Um, not really me. I like bright and colorful. Here's a shawl here. It's just not me. Um, all of these patterns are very colorful. And I can't... I like the style of this jacket. I just don't like the motif on the back. So it's one of those things I'm half tempted like to make and just make the back of it solid. So here's the back. So you can see what I'm talking about. There's a motif here in the back that's in the center of the back but I think it's really cute from the front so I'm like you could easily just not do the color work in the middle and have that because I, I like the rounded um, cardigans I also really like this really big and chunky cardigan it's just looks like it'd be a super super fast knit I like the earthy colors um, you know, it has some stripes, which of course are always optional. You don't have to do stripes. Um, and then there, there's some more for that. I'm not going to show you everything, but then there's like a whole section on cables. Now, not all of them are my taste, but they are very classic, just pretty cables. I'm trying to find the one that I really liked here. Um, there's some that are very intricate, lots, lots of cabling. And then there's some that's just some cabling down the front, which is what I'm looking for. The new layout is nice because it has big pictures all in one section. And then littler pictures in with the pattern. I'm not seeing a big one of the one I like. I need more sticky tabs. Anyways, I'll show you this one. This is, you know, an all-over cable. Very ambitious. I... I like the look of cables. I don't like doing cables. It just, I feel like it slows me down. Oh, here's the one I liked. This just has a cable panel down the front. And I, of course, I love the color. 
So overall, I liked most of the things in this issue. It's been a really long time since I've bought a magazine, just a regular knitting magazine, off the newsstand and really loved so many things in it. I said I love pretty much the whole section on the waffle stitch. This. They did a great thing by picking this as the cover shot because this caught my attention as it was propped up on the thing and I walked by and I was like, er. <laughs> So, love this issue. It's on newsstands now, Interweave Knits, winter 2014. Um, it is put out by FNW Media and it retails for $6.99. Okay, so that's it for the knitting. So, if you leave me now, I'll see you next week. And we're going to move into A Slice of Life. Wow. The response for me putting the little photo montage thing at the end of last week's episode has been huge. Like, I didn't, I didn't expect it. Like, I mean, I knew there would be people who would make comments, but the amount of PMs that I have gotten has been, like, overwhelming in a good way. I'm like, I feel like I've said that a lot in this last year, that things are overwhelming, but in a good way. Um, so many people have shared their stories with me, and it really has let me know I'm not alone. And it really lets me know that by sharing so much, I mean, I've been so honest about the, the struggles and the journeys and and just my feelings about it all that it lets me know that it is totally been worth it like sometimes I'm like oh maybe I shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't have like I don't know shouldn't have shared all that I have but then I get reassurance from you guys that it has helped you or made you feel better or motivated you that is the most awesome thing to hear is when other people are motivated motivated by what I've done um but it's been a year. A year ago today, I joined Weight Watchers and I started it all. So, <laughs> everybody's been like, so, what's your New Year's resolution this year? Like, I've gotten that question so much from family and friends. So, this year, I told them, I said, my New Year's resolution is to tone the squish. <laughs> so, um, but it's just, it's been crazy and it's been amazing and I did gain over the holidays and I weighed in yesterday, New Year's Eve, um, and gained 3.1 over the holiday, and I'm not stressing about it, I actually thought it'd be like twice that, I'm like, oh, probably five or six pounds, easy, because last week I was like, oh, and I'm gonna get right back on it, like, tomorrow, or whatever, and then it got hard, and then food came in, and then I was like, okay, you know, we got this, right, like, <sighs> yeah, my aunt, who I love so, so much, who makes the best cookies in the whole wide world, normally she comes and drops off a plate of cookies at our house, like Christmas Eve or the day before Christmas Eve, and she didn't show up this year, and it kind of, like, I don't know, made me concerned because for the last several years she has, and uh, so she stopped by, what would have been, it would have been Monday night, no, Sunday, no, it would have been Monday, because I, I had run to the post office, my husband called, and like, or texted and was like your aunt's here um she had been sick over the holidays um so she's like well I wasn't gonna touch food while sick and I'm like I can appreciate that yeah I ate lots of cookies because they're like the best cookies in the whole wide world it's like total flashback to my childhood because she was an aunt by marriage and her and my uncle divorced so you know I don't get to see her at Christmas or you know stuff like that but we're still really close. I mean, she's the mother of my cousin, so she'll always be my aunt. Um, so, but for sure, yesterday was weigh-in day, and I said, absolutely, like, this is it. Like, for sure. So, back on it today. Feeling good about it. And then I was really excited because it's New Year's Day. My best friend texts me, and she's like, hey, Happy New Year. Are you still doing Weight Watchers? And she started with me last year. I think she might have started two weeks in to when I started. And um, so hopefully she'll actually kind of stick with it. Because she lost like quite a bit of weight and then kind of fell off the wagon. And so this year it's just all about keeping it going. That's the thing, keeping it going. And so many people had said seeing the photos 
had inspired them to try to stick to it. And all I can say is find something that works for you. It might not be Weight Watchers. It might be low carb. It might be just using my fitness pal, which is a free app and calorie counter. Um, you know, whatever it is that you think is going to work for you that works with your lifestyle, just give it a try and try to stick to it because I promise you it is so worth it. And I have said from the beginning, it's not about looks. It's not about a certain size. It's not about a certain number on the scale. It's about being healthy. And I'm kind of reminded about that because the anniversary of my dad's death is coming up like in six weeks, six, seven weeks. And so those emotions kind of get going when I really think about it. And I just think, I did it. I did it. And if he were here, he would be proud of me. And he would be so happy that I'm making the healthy decisions that he should have made that would have saved his life. So, um, you know, just do it. You're worth it. You can do it. it it's so amazing what you can prove to yourself because there will be people out there who will roll their eyes when you say I, I can't eat that I'm trying to eat healthy or there are going to be people that will be like yeah I wonder how long this will last I heard it all I heard all the negative stuff and the naysayers and the eye rolls and I proved them wrong every one of them and it's awesome so um but thank you again from the bottom of my heart for letting me share my journey with you and um it's been amazing but it's a new year it's a new year and there's new goals and i have probably i don't know 20 pounds 17 to 20 pounds we'll go room there to go to hit my goal so i will be hard at it um trying to find new ways to exercise. Money is kind of, kind of limited. I don't really live in an area with a lot of um, fitness facilities and stuff and everything is like expensive or needs a membership. Um, we have a really nice Y, but it's expensive. Like looking into it and I'm just like, I can't, I can't really do that. And I've tried to try and define like groups or, or something and just where I live it doesn't have the facilities that like bigger cities would have. Um, so I'm just looking forward to warmer weather someday. It's been so cold here as I know it's been in so many other areas. And, um, oh, I wanted to give an update. So I was talking about the Lean Cuisine breakfast sandwiches and how the, the English muffin was kind of chewy. Well, luckily Denise of Knitting, uh, The Knitting Den had posted in my group about um, defrost it, follow the directions on the box, and then instead of microwaving the whole thing, just microwave the egg, with the egg and the cheese, and I toast the English muffin in the toaster, perfect. Problem solved. Sandwiches are delicious. Definitely be buying more. So thank you, Denise. Um, just wanted to tell you all about that because I really enjoyed having just, I only buy maybe one a week or one every other week, just for something different. So I'm not getting total burnout. Um, but 71.4 pounds in a year is exciting. So um, still a ways to go. So I'm glad, like I said, that I, you've allowed me to share it with you and inspire you and motivate you or, you know, maybe just get you to make some better decisions, you know, because it's, like I said, it's about being healthy and it's not being about skinny and I have no desire to ever get in a bikini again getting in a bathing suit still makes me want to puke um you know I still have very self-conscious I mean I probably I always have been and will probably always will be um but um tone the squish Woo! that's the goal this year so um nothing real exciting boring New Year's Eve, you know, we have kids, we stay home, play games, watch TV, just relaxing. Um, Christmas break is kind of winding down. The kids will go back to school soon. My husband will go back to work soon and um, looking forward to getting back in in the routine of things because right now everything's just been so crazy. <sighs> I feel so tired, but I'm glad I'm feeling better. So uh, next week, um, next week I better have that advent calendar scarf done. 
I'm like someone yell at me if I don't. Um, and I can't wait to start my sprig. Yay! So, um, I'm going to wrap it up here because it's gotten quite late in the day. I'm normally posting this online by now for you all to watch. So it might be a little late in the evening. So, I'm Jenna, also known as Retro Lemon. I'm Retro Lemon on Ravelry, Plurk, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Weight Watchers, and Fitbit. And until next week, I'll see you then.